Hey Rob, how's it going? Good, Doug. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. So this is, I think, the number six session that we we've done. So it's been a few few weeks, maybe even a month since uh, our last session or so. Is that about right? Yeah, three or four weeks sounds about right. Yeah. So one one thing that you know, I guess we realized now that you've been able to implement what we've you know talked about before, and that was primarily around. Um, I guess like optimizing the process of hiring people um, and using templates to make sure that you're not recreating the wheel each time you hire someone to do a new site. Um, so is that uh, an accurate <laughs> uh, summary of what we've done in the past up until this point? Yeah, we, uh, we looked at the content process, specifically the flow of hiring a writer and kind of the, the correspondences you do interviewing um, and then also just having the content templates. So what they're going to be writing about instead of recreating, as you said, spinning your wheels every time. So, yep, that's right. Okay, cool. Glad, <laughs> glad we remember the same thing. So um, the interesting thing is uh, now you've realized there's another bottleneck. So you, you fixed um, the front end of the content machine that you have and now you have way more content than you know what you were used to dealing with before. So there's a whole new problem, and you um, you know took some notes. I'm actually looking looking at them uh, for the first time uh, now. So we'll just kind of go through, and it, you may be able to guide the conversation however you see uh, see fit. But I'll just kind of I'll start us off. So. You got uh, three sites going with like 25,000 words or more, um, and they're, they're in place. The templates are working well, um, and like we said, now you're finding that it's a little bit of a struggle to you know, let go of actually posting the content. So you have all this content written, and then you're trying to proofread it and post it all on your own. Is that, is that right? That's perfectly, that's accurate, yep. Okay, <laughs> cool. So um, I guess, like I said, I, I think maybe you can guide us uh, early on. So I think you put it well in some of the notes that you sent over here. Yeah, so basically, like you said, you know, content was coming in like it's never come in before. And I, I wasn't used to coming in that fast. So in the past, it was like, okay, no problem. I'm going to just... I'll post it, right? Like, I know exactly what I need to do. But now it's like, you know, I'm, I, I've caught up a little bit, but I was like 35 articles behind. And it was like, oh, my God, you have to proofread. You have to look at the on page. And um, there's, that's, that's the bottleneck that we're, we're up against right now. Okay. Gotcha. And I see you have some, you know, some specific examples of the, the things you're sort of checking. And that's... Um, you know, does a partial match count as a keyword mentioned uh, as you're optimizing for on-page um, SEO? So, you know, you ha it sounds like you have some concern that the, the VAs, basically, they're, you're going to have to train them, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, this is good that we're talking about it, but I think a lot of this stuff is in my head, right? So, like, I don't, I haven't put it down. It's like, okay, I, I want about four or five mentions each article of the exact keyword or whatever it is. It's in my head. So every time I do a post, I'm just like kind of, I don't even have a checklist. I just know exactly what to do. And it's transferring that to a VA that I know is going to be, yes, like ongoing training. It just seems like such an effort, but it needs to be done. Got it. Okay. And it, it looks like, um, well, I think you answered your own question, a checklist. So you have the information and really, um, and I, I may be jumping to the punchline so you could uh, pull it back in if we need to, but, but essentially, you know, you have a, a list of things that you know you want done, they're in your head. Once you write them down, you can, you know, transfer it over to what would be a content manager, I guess and just let that content manager go through the piece 
um, you know, five mentions of the exact match keyword or like X number, whatever. Per, the, yeah. 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 Like whatever the criteria, maybe it's X number of mentions per um, hundred words. That way, so, you know, you, you can control the size um, or, yeah. or um, it's like size ag agnostic, I guess. Um, and let's see. So you have basically a checklist that your content manager can go through and then that essentially would uh, alleviate I guess those on-page SEO things that you're worried about, I think. And then, you know, perhaps you would still um, give a final uh, read through and audit, uh, or maybe you, you spot check just to make sure, you know, one out of five of them look right. And you could assume that, you know, a qualified person using a checklist would be able to take care of some of that stuff. So, um, like I said, I think I jumped to the punchline, but you have some pretty specific things here. So, um, let's see. You mentioned how many times the, the main keyword, um, you have like related keywords uh, is something you can consider. Um, other long tail keywords, let's see. URL, meta description, all, all of it sounds perfect for a checklist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think the constant struggle for me is, you know, I'm not quite sure that I know exactly, I mean, no one knows exact best practices, right? Right. And so it's, it's kind of letting go of, you know, I've always been the one in there going like, hey, let me just tweak it like this. Maybe I, I won't have the exact keyword in the title, but I put it in the URL, but it'll be like a partial match in the meta, you know, like, just, I don't know, just mixing it up. And I feel like uh, at some point you just have to, to let go and let the system take over because you're not creating one perfect page. It's going to be 30 pages on a website and it's going to be 10 to 20 to 30 websites. So in the aggregate, it needs to work out. So it's letting that happen. Right, right, right. <clears throat> exactly. Um, let's see. And then you do have... A couple questions about images so or, or at least notations about images too so I know what you mean I, I have a couple um, places like morgue file where I get yep. the like free pictures free images that you don't even have to attribute add an attribution or anything so um, it's limited though so you have to you have to get very creative there <laughs> yeah so uh, you know, that could take a little bit in, I mean, you're introducing a different skill set, nothing that's, you know, unteachable or overly complicated, but you do probably have to, you know, go through the process, download the image uh, or f find the image, download it, resize it, upload it to the WordPress installation, and then, you know, display it, uh, you know, the right way with a caption and make sure the file yeah. is renamed. So again, it's all teachable and it's, you know, it probably takes you, uh, you know, less than five minutes. And I would say you could just record a short video uh, and then talk through it. And then they could always refer back to that original video um, to watch you do it as well as, you know, a short outline of the steps. So um, and you were, it looks like a stream of consciousness, some of the notes. So, you know, you were like, will they be able to follow instructions? Um, hopefully so. So if you hire a VA and you, you, um, you know, invest the time to, to show them how to do it, they'll be able to. And I actually, I've done that exact thing where I said, go find an image, rename it. And I recorded a short video, gave it to the VA, let them, you know, they occasionally would make a mistake, but, uh, most of the time it was pretty good. So, um, and you talk about grammar so uh yeah yep so you have uh grammarly which i do too and it's it's okay um <laughs> i've definitely had some some issues with it i wasn't as happy with you know how well it would actually correct things but um i don't know what it, what do you think of grammarly yeah yeah so that's kind of the issue right it's like if I'm using it and I'm kind of being like the second pair of eye, I think it's good for like quick fix, you know, like, like something that's clearly wrong or, you know what I mean? Right. But you kind of have, you kind of have to watch it. And it's like, they're always, 
wants you to switch the word which to a that sometimes and sure is an R and, and that's something where I feel like if I give it to a VA it's gonna be like oh, that's a nightmare yeah um so I, I guess oh and to back up Grammarly is a um it's a, a an app they also have a plugin for your web browser but essentially it checks your grammar and the spellings and it works pretty well for a lot of things but it also misses a lot of things and then provides suggestions that are not that great so um i've also heard of one called hemingway uh one of my friends jay told me about it recently and um he seems pretty happy with it it's actually cheaper than grammarly and to me it looked like it worked slightly better and i've heard better things about hemingway so in hindsight i maybe would have checked that one out but um i think what you may have to do for that um, is just, you know, pick one of those like Grammarly, Hemingway. I think like WordPress internally has a decent like grammar check. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've used that or checked it out at all. I don't think so. So they have one on board and um, I would probably just let it, let it fly um, using one of the tools, teach a VA to use it, um, and then just let the errors go through. Because the fact is, like when I write stuff and I go through and try and proofread it on my own, and I don't have someone else do it, I have mistakes in there. So it's kind of like <laughs> it's just a fact of life. So if they if they mess it up, it, I mean it's they're as good as me, I guess. <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll add one more thing to the equation. Um, I found this this writer who he's, he's working on now the second project. So he, I said the three sites we have going, so he's done two of them. And uh, his work is so solid that I don't even put it in Grammarly. So if I hire him or someone equivalent that I just absolutely trust, we don't really have a problem. Like he's top notch. There was one of the niche sites where I just went with the lower price person and she just didn't quite have it, so I guess it depends. You know, I, I kind of want to lean towards more of the higher quality, so I might not even have to use it, so that's a thought, too. Okay. Now, could you, you know, the one writer that you're working with, I mean, could you get him to do, like, proofreading for you also? Do you know if he does that kind of stuff? I'm not sure, but I guess you could do that with anyone. I, I never really thought about that. Yeah, so since he's good, you've hired him for a couple things. Like, sounds like he's a good communicator. So, yeah, 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 you may be able to, you know, he'd probably prefer to, you know, work with someone that he knows is going to pay him and give him a good review and all that stuff. So I'm assuming you're working through Odesk or uh, whatever they renamed it. Elance. Elance, okay. Up. What's that? Upwork. Upwork, yeah. Upwork. Yeah. Work. Yeah, so um, anyway, it's easier for him probably um, to just, you know, work with you more than to try and find other gigs, assuming that he does that kind of work. So, um, so that, that's actually what I would try and do is to, like, promote him and give him more responsibility since he's working out well. Yep. Um, let's see here. Okay, so you, now you mentioned that um, it will probably be a long-term hire because of the training involved and that sort of thing. So I would I would agree with that. I mean, you know, you never know, but um, if you do state that ahead of time, you may be able to, you know, attract, uh, you know, a person that does want a long-term gig versus uh, someone who's just trying to, you know, work for a few weeks or something like that. Got it. Um, okay, I think we, we sort of flew through um, the information here. Now, I think I think I mentioned it before, but just to, to round, round it up, you have um, basically a mental checklist that you go through whenever you check the work. So what you need to do is to just obviously make a list document it, I would probably put it in, you know, whatever Google Docs or some spreadsheet that you use. 
and then, you know, really just make it a step-by-step, -step, you know, whatever, 25 point checklist for each time something's posted. And, you know, you can, you know, similar to what we've done before, um, you know, put links in for each one of those steps, right? So you may have a link for, you know, find, find an image on, you know, morgue file, uh, check there first. Um, here's a video on how to do it. Um, if you can't find anything there, go to, you know, Flickr Creative Commons and just a, a process flow with documentation on how to do each step so that it's, you know, in one place organized and you hire someone new, it will take a little time. Maybe you even have to walk through the process with them the first time for certain things. Um, and uh, before I go on, does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's basically a document that has all the steps I would do. And then for each one, if it warrants it, which it probably does either like a video, right? But just links to a video is probably the best way. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That's that makes sense. Okay. And then I would probably have like uh, your your wife or someone that's not you, right? <laughs> someone yeah. go through the process and just make sure like you know it, it makes sense. So they would all of a sudden get to step four and just say, I'm lost. I have no idea. Like, I don't know how we got here. I don't know what that step means. And then, you know, you need to add something in or you forgot a step that you internalize and you automatically do, but a VA would need to have it. So, you know, obviously basically it's just have someone check over your stuff yeah, to yeah. make sure. Um, and I think, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I believe um, with a checklist, you'll be able to take care of that stuff. And, you know, I, I would say for each, each um, like document or set of work that's published, that there be a, 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 a checklist that's completed for it. So it's like, you have the checklist of like when the person like went over that material and, and uh, posted it. So they actually like, they actually have like a, like maybe a Google spreadsheet and they're actually going check, 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 check. This is done. And that's separate from the instructions that they're following. Uh, In a way. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. It's sort of like um, you would have a, like a master template checklist and then like a working checklist, which is just a copy that, um, you know, like uh, post number one dash, like checklist, like posting checklist uh, is a really terrible file name and example. But the idea is uh, like whatever piece of content that you um, would have the VA check over, um, it has a, a checklist specific for it so you can go and see oh well this one's done through step 10 and um you know essentially you have like a real life status and once it's completed you can go back and say hey va like you said you did this step but there's no image so <laughs> like you're fired or whatever but basically so you, it's, yeah good it's, it's like maybe let's say you have 25 articles and then it's like checks going across for he's done this article has done this 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 right is like kind of um i was thinking more like an sorry i'm not communicating super well that's a really good idea though because you basically have a status <laughs> of like your full content plan so um you can do exactly what you said where you have um like the the list of content um here and then the the columns would be uh like which step along the way and then you could have like a, a picture of your you know your full status of all your content however um i meant uh so you have a, a template of the checklist and then you just make a copy of that uh template for the va to go over that and they actually say uh like I did step one, I did step two, and they just like check it off along the way. Cause I'm assuming it probably will be like a 25 point checklist. So yeah. 
that make sense or am I still uh, no, so for, sense. E for each article they're just going to I guess I'm having trouble differentiating like you have just a set of okay so for a post there's 25 steps right let's just say and that's a that's a document that's going to like link to videos right mm -hmm. okay but then what you're saying is that's separate from this thing that they go through and they check uh it's a copy of it so okay. you, you'll have a master template and then for every piece of content you make a copy oh, i of see it. i see yeah yep okay so it's like this article and then basically that you just you take it a copy of it and you use it for this one it just goes through this whole thing. i get it yeah. yeah 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 so so at the end you would have like a piece of content and then like the completed checklist for that content ah uh, okay yep. yeah so, so really i mean it's it's basically <clears throat> there's two advantages for it right so when the va is first starting to do the work um like it's very explicit about where they're at so like the next day when they start working or if they have to stop for a little while they can come back and see exactly where they're at and then the second part is it's like a I guess like uh, surgeons have these and pilots have like the the checklist that they go through. Like they count all the sponges before you're talking about a surgeon, of course, they like count all the sponges and, and utensils or whatever uh, things they're using before they start. And they count after they finish to make sure they didn't leave like a sponge inside someone. So um, basically, after the VA does understand the process really well, they should still go through the checklist so they don't forget anything. That's why the checklists are so powerful, so you don't forget something uh, stupid. Got it. Yep. Okay. So, and I think, sorry about that. I think I just, I, when I was explaining it, I was trying to add too many qualifiers and stuff, but essentially each piece of content has its own checklist based on the master template that you'll be creating. Makes sense. Yeah, so that's the much more elegant way to say it, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So, any any thoughts or questions about like creating the checklist or actually implementing it? No, I was just gonna say it's good to talk to you because it feels like I have permission to to do this because I, I feel like it's not gonna be like the biggest project, but it's. It's going to be a little bit of work, and I think I had the 35 articles, so I was like, man, I just don't want to get behind. You know that feeling where you're just, <laughs> you're just like, go, go, go. I just want to get this site up, and I guess talking with you, you've acknowledged you know, some of the, the things I've talked about, but at the same time, you're, it's like, no, it can be done. It's just you have to take the time to, to go through it. So, Cool. Yeah, I think um, I think – it'll probably be like insightful for you to write out the process because you, I bet you'll find things that you want to do or, re, you know, remember things that you, uh, or see things that you don't always do that should always be done. And, um, when you have the checklist and you, you know, you train your VA, um, at the end, I, I bet, uh, they may be doing a better job than you were, uh, with your mental checklist. Just because they'll, you know, they're following the checklist. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I forget some stuff sometimes, and I look back, I go, "Oops." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I do too. I, uh, I realized one of the sites that I have, I had a bunch of um, content that uh, basically I had a VA, uh, <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. I had a VA, uh, I guess put it in a review mode, they uploaded everything for me and they, they put it in, they followed the directions that I gave them and um, they're like pending review. All I have to do is publish them, but I, um, I sort of forgot <laughs> that they were out there for like you know, three or four weeks. So they've just been hanging out. Wow. So um, anyway, yeah, I just, I, I forget stuff too. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, when you write, write out this checklist, you're going to be like, yeah, this is, you know, we're gonna make this process better than you know than it was. So, I guess, uh, and then same concepts for maybe worth uh, the hiring process, or you think it might be just pretty similar to the the content hiring? 
Um, I think it. I think it would be similar. Um, although, okay, so I'm thinking through. Um, like maybe a, maybe a test. Yeah. Interview type thing. I I think so. I mean, I would. Um, I would obviously try to you know hire the guy, promote the guy that you're already working with well, um, but then you know oh, after. He's expensive. Oh, he is maybe too much. Okay. Just for I just want to keep him for writing. Yeah, he's too much. Okay, gotcha. That that makes perfect sense. Um, so I think, oh, gosh. So the advantage, of course, of uh, you know getting someone for the the trial job is you know you hopefully would get someone you know better if you're if you're trying to hire two at this or sorry if you hire two for the the trial job then um, you may be better off. In the, in the long run. However, um, then you have to train two people, right? So that may be kind of a pain. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I guess like anything, there's, you have the trade-off of, you know, spending a little more time. So I would probably just try, try to hire one person to do a trial rather than going through okay. twice, just because this is more of an investment you may be paying a little bit more and I would, you know, I would probably opt for someone that has, you know, more experience, more reviews. And this is a higher level, um, you know, person, I think, than just the writer. Um, what do you think? Um, I think maybe, maybe like a partial interview assignment where we, we just have them, um, uh, Actually, you gave me a great idea a while back. We have this like dummy WordPress uh, account, and then just have them go and just do a really small post, and yeah. just see how they put it together, and maybe get a gut feeling. This one looks pretty good. They follow it pretty good, or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually, that's that's a pretty good idea. Um, you know, when you let them know that you're going to pay them for the the trial job, you know, people obviously yeah. they you know, they value that, they see it as a more serious, um, you know, kind of job. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I think I would probably just do, do one at a time. And then, um, you know, maybe the, f the first gig that you give them, maybe it's only for like five articles and then, right. um, at, like after the trial. So only maybe like five articles that they're going to publish and go through the checklist and all that stuff. That way, um, if it doesn't work out or something weird, then you can get rid of them pretty quickly, and it's not like a, you know, a three month contract or something like that. So, yeah, I like that quick check in, see how's it going, and then yeah, proceed or dump. Yeah, yeah, and I guess um, we mentioned it before, but this is probably you know really key to make sure that the VA is really comfortable asking you more questions and that you're patient to field those questions. So, um, you know, ch I guess like to have off often, sorry, can't talk today to have checkpoints very often and to make sure that they are not afraid to ask you questions. Cause the last thing you want is for someone to like, you know, they're building like 10, 10 hours and they've done like no work cause they were confused. So um, it'd be better to just, you know, get the questions out there, make sure they're not shy. So. Yep. Encourage that. Yep. Cool. So uh, any other questions or thoughts? I guess just what would you say is like kind of the, the next step, uh, you know, for next time or where, where exactly would you expect me to be? I guess. Um, let's see. So when, what time frame are we talking about? Do you, do you have an idea? Yeah, I mean, I would like maybe within the next week or two to have someone hired at least trying some, okay. some sample or, the, or five articles or something like that. Okay, I would see, um, I would see it like this. Uh, probably have the checklist drafted um, in like the next day or two. Um, something like that. I know you have, you know, some, some travel stuff that you're working on right now, but, um, 
yeah, have, have that drafted, at least like the, the checklist without any of the video activities um, documented. And then, um, you know, probably at the same time, you could figure out which activities need to have a video. And um, let's just say it's uh, like five two minute videos, right? Um, out of 25 steps, I'm just making up numbers, by the way, but let's assume there's just a, a subset um, of, of the activities that need a video. And really, you know, the video doesn't have to be high quality. You can just do, you know, whatever screen capture stuff you have available. And then, um, you know, that shouldn't take you more than a half hour. So I would say within four days or so, you should have the checklist done. You should have the videos made and I think um, at that point you should be able to have um, you know a, a, a job listing out there and I guess start start figuring out like uh, you know how many <clears throat> sorry how much <laughs> how much it would end up costing um, based on some of the, the uh, interest that you're getting. Because I, ha I have no clue. I mean, I assume you could probably get, uh, you know, an, a VA that's offshore whose English is pretty good that should be able to do this stuff. Um, so to get back to your original question, I think you're right. In about a week, you should have, um, you know, I guess people applying for the job or so. You think that's yep, doable? Time. Yeah, and it was just nice the way you laid it out. So you make checklists, videos, boom, and then pass it by my wife, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure, make sure somebody takes a look at it, and then um, yeah, I think in in that time frame it, you should be able to. And I bet, I mean, if this person is only doing, um, you know, if they could work two, three hours a day just posting stuff, like. I think you're going to expose another uh, bottleneck because now you're going to have your content and then you're going to have all the content posted like really fast. So, um, yeah, that, yeah, be, right. yeah, I know you'll have a bunch of sites that, you know, they, they need the backlinks. So, but this is the right way to do it. You know, like, you know, you got to have the sites up and you have to have the stuff published before you can build backlinks. So. I would rather be sitting in the boat with too much content not ranking than yeah. no content to rank. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So. Um, cool. So uh, I guess you know we'll check in with you um, you know next week and let me know if you have any questions on like the checklist. But I think you know after the conversation, I think we have a pretty good or you have a pretty good understanding of what what it'll end up being. So. All Feeling right. good. Cool. Any any other questions? Uh, no. We'll check in. All right. Cool. Well, uh, thanks, Rob, and uh, good luck over the next week. We're excited to see the uh, the checklist. Thank you. See ya. See you, Doug.